Okay, so today I'm going to start my succession planting. We're roughly the middle of July. I think it's more or less like maybe the 17th or the 18th. I don't remember the exact date, but that's about when I start my, my winter crops. So we're going to plant these out and I'm going to draw up the tags on them like I do, like I normally do. I think I showed you how to make these tags, but we're going to draw up these tags and We'll put them inside, and then I'll show you the, the plants that I'm going to be uh, growing for this winter. So let me get everything prepared, and then I'll just show you my my um, my winter crops that I'm going to grow. All right, so I set one of them up. I'm not going to film me doing all of them, but basically I'll do this one with you just to show you how to do it. And i got to do it one-handed because I don't have my tripod out here. So we'll work with the um, with this cabbage. Now this particular cabbage is a leaf type of cabbage it's not a heading type of cabbage so it's almost like uh, it almost looks like dinosaur kale but it's a cabbage so let's we'll start with this one and I'm picking this one because I want to try something different than heading it for me the problem with uh, heading cabbages and anything that's heading is the insects like to burrow in there and it's really not fun dealing with the insects Sorry about the, okay, so trying to do this one-handed is not fun. <laughs> what I do, and I didn't do it, did I? Okay. All right, well, we'll do it this way. We'll do it backwards. All right, normally I pour my seeds in. I really don't want them to go all over the place like they're doing because I'm doing this with one hand. And I just like to mix up the top of the soil in general like this. Now, this soil was dry, so it's really dry in the bottom. So I'm going to have to water this several times. I didn't have time to hydrate it. It dried out in the sun, and it's no big deal. It's just it's dry, and you got to water it like five times before it becomes, you know, fully saturated with moisture. And that's a pain in the neck, and I, you know, so I'm going to have a little bit of a hard time. So what I do normally, what I do is I'll I'll have my seed thing ready. I'll water it for like two or three days in a row before I'm ready to plant. I'll water it, get it to where I like it, nice and stiff like that, and then I'll take my my uh, barbecue stick here, and I just break up the surface of it like this because the rest down there below is all settled in like a cake, all right? And I'll break it up like this. Now it's all ready to go. Now, once I get it like basically like that, I'll take my seeds and sprinkle them in there, and I just move it around a little bit and then pack it down. That's one way to, to do it. In, the, in a case like this, it, it's easier for me to do it that way rather than doing it the other way where I put each one and make a hole for it. It's a lot of work. But I like to break them up ahead of time and, you know, I like to fill the seed trays ahead of time and then break them up like this and then pack them down. It, the root ball comes out so much easier and better. So I will be thinning these out more than likely because I only want to get about, I don't know, three or four plants and I'm going to let them grow fairly big. And then I'm going to sep try to separate what I can and grow the, whatever I can in the greenhouse. And then whatever I can, I'll put out in the garden area outside and I'll... I'll rake out the wood chips and then I'll uh, put some soil down and I'll grow them out there this year. Uh, it, it, I didn't start my, my garden this year. Just to recap on why you know, I let my garden go fallow for this year is because I'm selling my house. But the way things look right now, it's probably not going to sell this year. It's just not, not good. The realtor I picked is, is, um, was a real dud. And they're not really motivated. They don't really know what they're doing. And and that's one problem. And the other problem is it's actually really too late in the year for me to sell. So probably, probably going to pull the house off the market this year and I'll put it up next year. So that leaves me the rest of the growing season to take advantage of doing a, you know, a winter grow and finishing out my existing harvest that you see right here, you know all my tomato plants and everything. So now I can do a successive planting and uh, instead of me growing it out early like I always do, I'll just do you know, a winter garden out there, that's all. So anyway, that's the one. And then after I get the seeds in there, I just give it a tamp down, you know, because 
you want to keep the seeds in the tray is what you want to do. You don't want them bouncing all over the place. And, uh, you know, that kind of a thing. So just give it a little tamp. When you water, it'll pretty much do its thing. And put your tag in there. And that's it. So let me plant the rest of these out, and then I'll show you what I got growing for the rest of the year. So I, because I got to prepare all the tags. Now I did show you how to make these tags. I mean, uh, I believe I I showed you in one of my videos. I should make a dedicated video for that, and the reason why I should do that is because I can't even remember the video I showed you how to make these tags. I show you how to make them and everything. So I need to make a video just on the tags and just that way if I need to reference it, I could just pull that up. If I try to reference that video now and put it in the description, I'll never find it. I, I don't even remember what video it is. I mean, I have almost a thousand videos, so I, I can't remember myself. It was in one of the uh, videos I did, either gardening or seed starting. I don't remember. But I'll do a video on how to make these tags and how I how I make them, and I'll show you exactly how to make them and, and the marker and stuff I use. Also, too, just so you know, see all these are all last year's tags. Now, if once you make these tags, this isn't going to be about tags, but once you make these tags, you can put these in the sun for like one year, like the ones that you ain't going to use anymore, unless you know you're going to use okra and grow that particular variety, you could just reuse the same tag. But if you don't want to grow it this year and you want it to bleach out, just put it in the sun. You like I could lay all these tags out on my table and just let it bake there in the sun for a few months and it'll bleach it white, brand new. Now, it doesn't last forever, too. These uh, markers don't last forever, but it's good for a season. And you can also bleach it out. It's just the sun will dry them out and they will break after a season or two. So you could get away with one or two seasons with these particular kind of tags. I'll, I'll do a video on how to make those. All right, so let me do. Let me finish out the rest of my planting. I need to concentrate on what I'm going to put in what trays, and then um, <clears throat> I will show you everything I'm growing for my for my winter uh, grow out. Okay, so they're all planted up. I got to water them, but I'm not going to do that on camera. And what we got going here is red Russian kale. We're growing uh, kohlrabi, the early purple Vienna, Long Island Brussels sprouts, the Nero di Tosa. I believe that's a um, that's a cabbage. It's it's a non-heading cabbage. It's a it's a leaf cabbage, Brunswick cabbage, and uh, dinosaur kale over there. Over here we got the Chinese mustard, which is a different type. It's a heading type of a mustard. It's a very strange looking plant, but it's a heading type of mustard. I've tried to get it to head several times, and no luck. We got the early green. I believe that's broccoli. That's early green broccoli. We got the purple of Sicily cauliflower, the Romanesco broccoli, which is the really strange looking type of broccoli. I've never ate it and I've never had luck getting that to head, but hopefully I'll get it to head this year because I'm really starting at the, probably the best time for broccoli. Uh, hopefully it, it we can get through the winter, you know, through summer without too much heat. And a pretty good amount of rain, and I'll be able to ride it all the way into uh, winter without worrying about it bolting. Because that once they bolt, they're shot. And I've been lately, all my um, brassicas are all bolting, and it, it, I'm just getting frustrated. That's why I'm not really growing them right now. Just haven't had luck. So the timing is everything. Uh, we got the Oriental Extra Dwarf uh, Bok Choy. I love this Bok Choy because. It grows really fast, and within a month or two, you're eating bok choy. And they're really small little micro bok choys like this. They're really cool looking. So uh, I like those. That's going to be cool. I'll do a review on those. And then we got uh, vats non-heading. Uh, what is this? Collard. It's just collard greens. So it's non-heading. It's just a leaf uh, collard. I'm also doing, um, uh, what do you call these, lettuces because... I don't have any lettuce, and every time I go to the store buy lettuce, it's like $2 a head now. So why not grow some of these lettuces? Now, just for kicks and giggles, I'm doing the iceberg lettuce. Yeah, I could go to the store and buy that, but I have like a pound of seeds from iceberg lettuce, so I'm just growing those out. Uh, Boston Burgundy, one of my favorite, uh, like pink, not really red, but like pink lettuces. It's one of my favorite. Uh, winter density, that should be more of a cold hardy lettuce, so hopefully I can ride this up until the end of September. And keep it from bolting. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. 
Uh, Green Wave, I never grew that one before, but I do have had the seed for several years. And uh, we got the Costella Franco uh, chicory. We're going to grow the chicory on that one this year. I've grown these before, and I've never done a review because I wanted to bring it to bolt to see if I could get seed from it. And it did bolt like a chicory. It has beautiful flowers. And this is the Rosa de Verona Dragon. Um, what is this again? Radicchio. This is the Radicchio. Now, I never did a, re a review on the Radicchios. That's another one that I need to do on. I have like five or six Radicchio varieties that I need to review. Just too many plants to grow at once. So this will be a good review for, for these plants. Um, so that's it with that. I'm going to... I have all this extra seed from Sprout House when I was eating sprouts on a regular basis. Still got a ton of extras. I'm just going to broadcast a lot of those in my garden, on one side of my garden. I'm just going to broadcast them out, and hopefully they'll grow, and it'll become a little brassica thing. And I'll update you once these things sprout. So that is my winter, uh, my winter crops that I'm starting now, and uh, hopefully we can do pretty good with what I got. And that should ride me out for at least November, December with some decent uh, green vegetables to eat. So... Uh, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.